the Anchor Solux F3800. Whole house battery. 5,500 watts. Let's break 6,000. So hey, I know I talk about Anchor Solux's products a lot on my channel, but it's because I use them. And because of that, I also agreed to let them sponsor this video. I had a lot of people ask about the F3800 in my previous videos, and Anchor Solux was able to send us one out to make this video happen. So thank you, Anchor Solux, for doing that. This thing weighs about 135 pounds, but if you do need to lift it, there's this extra little handle down here that really helps a lot. We've got little brakes on the wheels, so it won't roll away. It's blocking my light. All right, so we've got the Anchor Solux F3800 and the expansion battery. And this time we get a nice flexible cable. So I'm really happy with that. Anchor's new 400 watt portable solar panel. And they made some upgrades over their previous 200 watt solar panel that I checked out. This one actually has the MC4 connectors instead of just an XT60 connector. I've noticed over time that the panels with XT60 connectors seem to generally get a little bit loose and the MC4 connectors just seem much more reliable. I love that it has its own handle that you can easily grab. So one person could carry two of these panels. And finally, we've got a 400 watt panel with kickstands. And with one F3800, you could potentially use six of the 400 watt panel to get the maximum input of 2400 watts. I was able to combine all of the Anchor Solux solar panels that I have, which is this 400 watt panel and two 200 watt panels for a total of 800 watts. And I was able to connect them in parallel to charge the Anchor Solux F3800. Now, I know not everyone that watches this channel is an expert in how solar works, and you can use any brand of solar panel to charge the F3800. I have an array in my backyard that is 1100 watts that I was able to use just fine. You just need to make sure that positive goes into positive, negative goes into negative, and then you're under 60 volts. And we're gonna install a transfer switch, which is the thing you need to connect the F3800 to your house. And we got a nice big beefy cable to do it. But well, we're not going to be installing it. We're going to be paying an electrician to do it, a qualified one, because I don't want to electrocute myself. But while I wait for the electrician to get here, let's go ahead and talk about the F3800. First, the port's on the side. So we've got the expansion battery port, which is what you plug the expansion batteries into. We've got two solar inputs that are 60 volts and up to 25 amps. AC input, which will let you get up to 1800 watts. And we've got this house looking plug, which goes to their home power panel. And if you're using the home power panel with one of the expansion batteries, you can charge it at up to 3,800 watts per hour. And if you're using at least two F3800s and two expansion batteries, you can charge it up to 6,000 watts per hour using that home power panel. So if you use that home power panel and scale your system up, you can charge your system really quickly. We've got our display, our car socket, a button to turn the car socket on and off, three USB-C ports, two USB-A ports, our Bluetooth button, a display button, and the on and off switch, which you have to hold for three seconds to turn it on and off. We've got the 240 volt, 25 amp EV port, the plug for my transfer switch, six AC outlets, and some over circuit protection. The F3800 itself will give you 6,000 watts of output, but you can pair two of them together to get 12,000 watts of output. The capacity of the F3800 is 3,800 watt hours, F3800, and every expansion battery will give you an additional 3,800 watt hours. So if you wanna double the capacity of the F3800, you just get one of these expansion batteries, but you can attach up to six of them to each F3800. So if you really wanted to, you could build a 12,000 watt output system with 53,800 watt hours or 53.8 kilowatt hours of capacity. So you could power your house for several days or possibly even a couple of weeks, depending on your usage. This is also the first actual power station that will allow you to just charge an EV with its 240 outlet without any additional accessories or additional units or attachments, because just the base unit itself has that 240 outlet. Granted, probably depending on the type of EV that you drive, it'll get you an extra 10 to 30 miles depending on your car, which is still better than nothing. And you can actually bring it with you in your car. 
but more importantly, it's a way to convert solar into power for an EV with no other additional accessories. And I know that a lot of people are interested in just buying a single unit that they can plug solar panels into and then plug into their car. And this will allow you to do that. Now, if we want to do the math on how long it would actually take you to charge your car, you could get 2,400 watts an hour into the Anker Solex F3800. For example, a 2019 Chevy Volt has an 18.4 kilowatt hour battery. So if you had ideal solar conditions, you could charge your Chevy Volt from zero to 100% in 7.6 hours using just the Anker Solex F3800 and some solar panels. And I think that's pretty cool. Now, if you have a much larger battery, you can figure out how long it'll take. You take your battery's capacity divided by the maximum solar input of the Anker Solex F3800, which is 2400. So if you have a 100 kilowatt hour battery, it would take you 41 hours of full sun in ideal conditions with the F3800 to charge it to full. Not the most practical way to charge your car, but it is possible. And this is the first really all-in-one unit you can just throw in your car and you can throw solar panels in your car, like a bunch of these. And if you're in a worst case scenario, you could recharge your car with it. And I think that's pretty cool. Now, I think the way more people are gonna use these is as a home battery backup system, not as a portable solar charging station for your car. And if you get the home power panel, which I unfortunately do not have, it will seamlessly integrate with the grid and grid tied solar panels. And you can set it in time of use mode you can also set it in home backup mode to where if the grid goes out, this will automatically switch over and power everything on that panel, which holds up to 12 circuits. And then there's another mode where it will just try and constantly use as much energy as it can to try and burn any excess solar that you're creating. But we're installing a transfer switch in my house, and that's where I'll be able to select whether I want any of the 10 circuits on it on the grid or powered off of a generator. In this case, it'll be the Anker Solix F3800. I really like that you can either have the F3800 upright like this, or on its back, like I had in the intro of this video, because it has nice little feet on the back and sometimes you just want to lay stuff down differently. But if you have it upright, if it's upright, that fits on there perfectly. Wrong way. And connecting them is pretty easy. I'm really happy with the new uh, cable that they're using. A couple more notes about the F3800 and the expansion batteries using lithium iron phosphate batteries, and they're rated for 3000 cycles or it should last you roughly 10 years. Now to be clear, that doesn't mean it will stop working after 10 years. It just means that after 10 years, these batteries will only have about 80% of the capacity as they did when they were new. So specifically, that means that the battery capacity after 10 years, instead of being 3,840 watt hours, will be closer to 3,000 watt hours. But the unit should still function perfectly fine. It's quite a rugged construction, but you shouldn't be throwing these things around anyways. They're very heavy. The F3800 has a capable set of wheels and anyone can move it around. We've also got our tow bar that makes moving it around nice and easy. I need a bigger studio. The F3800 isn't whisper quiet like the Anker Solix F2000 was. It's also got a 240 volt outlet and it's a much bigger piece of equipment. It's still significantly quieter than a gas generator and you can run this thing indoors. But this should be in your garage or wherever your transfer switch is, not in my studio where I record sound. So again, we're still waiting for that electrician to show up. This is what the transfer switch looks like. We've got the 30 amp breaker, which is connected to two of these things, the 20 amp breaker, which is also connected to two of these things, and then a bunch of 15 amp breakers for a total of 10 circuits. So if I wanted everything to be powered off of the grid, I would just put them all down to line. And then if I wanted just one of these circuits to be powered off of the F3800 after it was plugged in, I would just pick that one and move it over to generator. That's where the advantage of having the whole home power panel really comes in to where you don't have to flip those switches. If you, if you have it set up in backup mode, if you lose grid power, it just automatically starts powering your house with the F3800. So if that's what you're looking for, get the home power panel. I would probably prefer the home power panel, but they were completely out of stock, so I'm going with the transfer switch. The F3800 has Wi-Fi, so you can manage and watch your power consumption or usage or turn on and off the AC outlets while you are not home. Now, this is not a cheap piece of equipment, it's expensive, but there's a 35% discount until November 19th. So if you've watched this video within the first 10 days that I've published it, you can get this for $2,600. It's a huge discount and an incredible value for what you're getting, which is one of the first portable power stations that actually has a functioning 240 volt 
outlet on it without any additional accessories. A pretty incredible capacity and a great 6,000 watts of output or 12,000 watts if you combine two of them. There's also a bunch of different combinations of equipment, including the home power panel, or a 10 load circuit breaker, or a 12 circuit circuit breaker, and various accessories you might want with this thing. So don't miss out. And can we just talk about the rate at which this technology is improving? I am thoroughly impressed with what Anchor, ha Anchor Solix has done with the F3800 and the expansion battery, how compact it is, and how much they've just improved upon the previous design of their products. It was 13 months ago that I bought my first power station. It was, uh, I think it was an EcoFlow Delta Pro. Actually, it was refurbished and it was more expensive than the price of what you can get the F3800 for on their Kickstarter right now. And I am just very impressed with how far it's come. I just heard back from my electrician. He won't be able to make it here until Thursday, which is the 9th, which is the day I'm gonna be publishing this video. So I'm gonna to have to make a follow-up video after I get that transfer switch installed so I can show you the Anchor Solux F3800 powering my whole house. So I can't power my whole house with it today, but I'm gonna go ahead and power everything that I can in my studio and see how much I can get out of this thing. I turned my lights up to 100% and we're getting about a thousand watts, but I think I can crank them higher. Well, we're at uh, 2,400 watts. Let's go ahead and plug in the air conditioner. There you go, everything on my studio is on. We're pulling 3,200 watts and I, I can't, tr I mean, I'm not gonna be able to this thing can power my whole house, so I'm not gonna be able to break it. Actually, there is a way we can get this thing cooking a little bit hotter. Uh, I can charge some of the other power stations that I've gotten here. Hang on, let's fix that. My studio on the power station right now, and we're drawing about 1200 watts. We're charging up the Anchor Solix F2000 back there. There we go, we're up to 4,000 watts now. Th that's a, That fan noise is not coming from the Anchor Solex, that's coming from the uh, solid state power station that I've got over here. 4,000 watts. Uh, we can crank this up a little bit further. Let's, tr let's try the air conditioner. Well, will start that up with no trouble. Yeah, we're, uh, we're chilling just under 5,000 watts. Let me turn my lights up a little bit more. 5,500 watts. All right, let's, uh, let's break 6,000. We're uh, going past the rated capacity, just barely, 6,000, and we're off. So we can't do it for very long, but that's okay. We did what we wanted to do. We wanted to test it and see if it would turn off. To turn it back on, you just have to hit that little button, and everything will just kick right back. And that's going to be it for today's video. I'm sorry we didn't get to the transfer switch yet, but we'll handle that next week. Thanks for watching, and make sure you're subscribed if you want to follow along. Peace.